So maybe that's all a little bit abstract. Um, let's, let me go through a simple example to calculate returns to scale, okay? So suppose we've got a production function that looks like this. Q is equal to two times the square root of K plus two times the square root of L, okay? So in this case, if you've got, for example, four capital and four labor, uh, the square root of that is two, and so you're gonna end up with two times two is four, plus two times two is four, you're gonna end up with eight output if you've got four units of capital and four units of labor. What if you double that, okay? So this was for K equals four and L equals four. What if we go to eight and eight? Okay, so we have uh, eight times, or we have twice as much capital and twice as much labor now. If we substitute in for k eight, we get this, and l is also eight. We end up with these guys here, and the square root of eight is about two point eight. Okay, so we now have two times two point eight plus two times two point eight. That's roughly speaking. Okay, this is equal to 5.6, if I'm not mistaken, plus 5.6. Add those two together, we get 10, 11.2, uh, okay? The important point is that we doubled the inputs, so we went from four to eight, but the output only increased, well, it didn't double. If it doubled, it would have gone up to 16. So this thing has decreasing returns to scale. So that's one simple example. and. In general, plugging numbers in is like a simple way to see if something has increasing, decreasing, or marginal returns to scale. But a sort of more like foolproof, sort of sophisticated way to do it is to instead just, instead of putting in exact numbers, use a proportion. Okay, so let me show you. Let's assume that we're going to increase K. Uh, by, we'll say, lambda, a Greek letter that we're going to use in this course a lot. Okay, and this is just some number. It could be two, could be three, could be whatever, right? The point is that we're now going to switch to from Q equals 2K, 2 square root of K plus 2 uh, square root of L to Q prime is equal to 2 square root of lambda times K. So we've increased it by a, a factor plus two times lambda times the square root of L. Okay? I see that you can't see that. Let me try down here. We're gonna go to Q. This is our original one. And here is our Q prime, where we've scaled K and L by a constant factor, lambda, okay? We can rearrange this to basically try to decide, show that Q prime is gonna be less than lambda Q, okay? So how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna just factor out lambda because the square root sign is really the same as taking each of these to the power of one half. And so I can multiply or I can sort of split them just like I would split something that was um, like, it's just an exponent rule, I guess. Then I can pull that out front, factor out this. So you can see that if I multiply the square root of lambda out through here, I'm gonna get back to this stage up here. But this here, I've already shown is equal to Q. So now what I have shown is that Q prime is equal to the square root of lambda times Q. And that's going to be less than lambda times Q for any lambda that's greater than one. So if I increase the proportion by any amount, uh, the Q prime here, the amount that of extra output I get is going to be less than a, uh, the same proportion increase uh, in the output.